Hey there, this is Nick with an awesome video. I'm gonna show you how you can project your cash flow in Google Sheets really, really easily, but extremely powerfully. All right, so we're gonna talk through how we can add information to a ledger system and how we can graph out what our cash flow is going to be over time. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can add that ledger information to see how your net income and your net cash flow progresses over time. I'm gonna show you how you can actually create a template for your regular monthly expenses so you can kind of copy and paste those over without too much work. And then lastly, I'm gonna show you how we can convert this into a pivot table style report using slicers for an extremely, extremely dynamic reporting. All right, so we're gonna start from really simple, we're gonna to get to some really complex stuff, but the template is here for you. So if you wanna download this template, go and grab it online. We have it at IncomeDigs.com. Download the template and use it and then start creating it and, and customizing it to fit your business a little bit better. Okay, so what we're gonna do, going into Google Sheets here, is I'm gonna show you the ledger method. And so I'm usually doing everything with some kind of ledger or some kind of data tab as I have here where I'm gonna add information and then on the other sheets, I'm going to be doing some reporting or some calculations on it. So really simply, what I wanna do here is I wanna project cash flow out. So I want a list of all the transactions that are gonna hit my business in the future so that I can understand positives and negatives, ups and downs. So I'm gonna be making those projections. So here I have date, type, project. So we're gonna do this in the context of potentially like a construction business, okay? So some kind of building business where we have projects description, amount, and then we're gonna calculate the month out here. Okay, so we can put, really simply, we can put, you know, on, I'm recording this uh, the end of June 2023, so we can say that in July, I am going to have income for a specific project of uh, $25,000, okay? And so we're gonna add that kind of information here in the future. The goal being, on a separate sheet here, we're gonna indicate how much cash we have now, and we're gonna project out how much cash we're gonna have in the future, okay? So the first thing I want you to do with this template is go ahead and put in your beginning cash. So this is like the cash that you have in your bank account. Put that in there, right there, and then we'll see this chart build out. Okay, so when it comes to the types, I have my lists over here. So whenever we're doing a drop down, all right, data validation, all right, that's how we do that drop down. We're using data validation here, and typically it's a good idea to make this dynamic to reference another sheet. So I'm almost always creating a lists tab in my Google Sheets. So I have a list here of projects, and then my categories, and I have some really cool stuff here that I'm gonna use when we get into the pivot portion of things, okay? So when you have those lists, we can create that um, data validation where I'm gonna highlight the cells that I want that validation to pertain to. Okay, in this case I got B2, okay? Um, B to, and then I'm going to indicate from which tab, from which sheet am I gonna go get the information. In this case, we're going to lists BB, okay? So lists BB, those are my categories there, and then I can color them if I want, which I've done. Okay, so I have income, cost of goods sold, expenses, and then other cash flow. Okay, so we can add all the information there. Then our projects is coming same list tab, I have my projects here. So I have NA, because there's certain things that are gonna happen in your business that don't pertain to a specific project. And then as you take on new projects, you can list those there. So one, two, three, Main Street, we take on a new project, we list it there. And then in our ledger, it shows up, okay? And a nice little trick with this, what uh, Google Sheets is doing a nice job of is we can, when we do this validation, okay, so this validation applies here, all right? we can do lists A to A, as opposed to doing like A1 to A6, that's not dynamic, but A to A means if I put anything here, it's going to show up in my list. If I just kinda refresh that, okay? And then when I take that off, it'll be removed from my list. Okay, so I go here, you'd see that it's no longer in my list. Okay, so what we're gonna do, and the reason we like to use data validation is we don't wanna allow a user or ourselves to write the project wrong, right? We don't wanna like have spelling errors or anything like that. So we're gonna start adding some information to this. So like on 7.4, I'm gonna get information, or I'm gonna get a deposit for this project. Also, sometime in July, I'm gonna have expenses for this project. Now you can decide how detailed you wanna get with this. Okay, so like if you know that you have a rough plumbing bill due around 715, or you might have a rough plumbing due, due around 715, you can go ahead and put that in here. 
for any expenses, because we're doing cash flow, we want to do negative. So if I think my rough plumbing is going to be negative 7,500, go ahead and put that in. And then maybe we have around the same time, I'm copying and pasting, maybe I have my rough electric, and that's going to be negative 6,500. Okay. Now, if you have that level of detail, great. If not, what you can do is just kind of take a big number and say, you know what, I don't know what the rough plumbing, the electric, all that stuff, I don't know what all of it's going to be, but I can expect that at some point in July, because we're going monthly here, so I can do 731, instead of doing all of those, I can say, you know what, I'm just going to say all cogs for July, and maybe that's negative 22,500, okay? So it's up to you how you want to do that, all right? And so you can put in your projections. Now, I'm going to be entering this data manually. I'm going to show you some tricks on how we can pull in some regular expenses from a template. But another thing you can do, and what I do in my business, is I pull the information from Builder Trend. So in Builder Trend, I have two pieces of information. I have invoices, which are date driven. So as my project moves, my invoices move. I can export those and populate them in here. We can also do the same with purchase orders. So we have purchase orders for rough electric, for rough plumbing. We can tie them to schedule items and then export them down. And I have I will do that in a separate video. Right now we're gonna just kind of do things manually. Okay. So you're going to put in as much information as you can for each month to indicate what we project the cash flow to be. So I'm going to have income and cost of goods sold. I'm also going to have regular business expenses that don't pertain to a project. So I can say regular business expenses, or I can again get particular with it. I can say payroll, or I can say um, rent, okay? And you can put that in for the month, right? Be something like that, okay? We, other, we also have another category for other cash flow. So the three items be above go into our net profit, but other cash flow would be like paying down our credit card or paying down a line of credit or getting funding, okay? So we might get a new loan to fund a project, right? So it could be, um, if we're flipping a property, it could be hard money loan. And we can make that, you know, $50,000 and maybe that would pertain to a project. You can kind of make that call. Okay, make sure we have our dates in there too. Okay, uh, let's pay down the credit card. Okay, so I have just a little bit of information here. All right, so let's just look at how it goes on the chart here. So I have my beginning cash, income, cost of goods sold is my gross profit. Then my expenses come out, which my expenses, yep. Um, that gives me my net profit, and then I have other cash flow, net cash flow, okay? And the chart will populate. All right, now, I'm going to copy and paste some information, and I spent some time creating some sample data, so I'm going to populate that so you can see what it looks like. All right, so I'm going to go grab that sample data here. I want to show you what the chart can look like. Okay, so I'm putting that all in there. And another thing you'll see me do almost all the time, and these are kind of like getting to best practices that you can do with all the Google Sheets you use, is this filtered total is a really, really good tool. So I have a filter set up here, okay? And a filtered total is a really useful calculation. I'm gonna redo it for you right now. Okay, so it's called subtotal. So we go equals subtotal, okay? And we have various different functions we can do with a filtered list. So if I were to just do equals sum and pick up, that right there, great. If I filter it, it doesn't update, okay? Which in some cases makes sense, but I want the filter to apply. So that's what subtotal allows us to do. All right, now I'm gonna pick the function code. In this case, I'm gonna do sum, which is function code nine. You can also do min, max, average, etc. And then I'm gonna pick the range. Okay, so there's my range. I'm gonna go all the way down to 300, and ooh, I almost missed there. So you see I'm starting at 11, I'm gonna start at three. Okay, there's my filter total. Now, when I filter this down, say, hey, just give me August, it's gonna show me the total. So at any time, if I'm looking at this and kind of doing a sanity check, I can filter by a month and see like, hey, what's the cash flow? Or I can filter by a month and say, hey, what's the cash flow for a specific project? And there you go, okay? So filter totals are really good best practice. And you can see I have all this data in there. Excellent. Now, the other thing that we can do is we can make use of a monthly template. I'll get there in a second. Let's just look at what the chart uh, shows us. So I go to my chart here, 
Again, let's look across the top. I brought in months. If you want to expand this further, if you get this template, want to expand this further, really easy to do. You can just take these and just move them on down. Okay, now I'm going to have zeros for everything else, but um, but you can do that if you want. Okay. Um, actually, I should have 12 in here, shouldn't I? Yeah, for sure. Okay. Um, the other thing is, we'll just look at this chart quick. Let's go to G everywhere. So if you expand that out, just make sure you expand your, your chart reference as well. All right, cool. Everything's in there, looking good. Okay, so we have our beginning cash, income, cost of goods sold across the board. If you felt the need, you can do a sum here too. Okay, if you wanted to say like, all right, give me, give me for the, the year. So I can do a sum on, on total income. I can bring that down for everything else. There's my net, okay? I'm gonna get that out of there for now. Okay, so this chart populates really nicely. I got my income, cost of goods sold, expenses, other cash flow, and then I've got net profit as a line and ending cash as a line. Now, it probably makes sense to take this chart, and again, you're gonna customize this to how you how you want it to look, but you know, it might make sense to have some uh, data labels in there. Okay, so if I add data labels to all series, it might get a little messy, but maybe not. That's not too bad. You know, that's kind of fine. But if you wanted to maybe just apply to say like your net profit, uh, you can do data labels right there. Okay, or let's go net profit. Let's go ending cash. Maybe I want data labels on that. Okay, so that shows me how much cash I have. So it's up to you how you want to do your data labels. All right, but there's my projection. Now, I mentioned that we had that monthly template. So when you're doing this, I mean, the information is only as good as you enter it, right? So um, it can be tedious to enter all this information and keep it up to date. That's why it's a really good idea for your project-specific data to use something like Builder Trend or some other projection tool. Because to go in here and to really think about, you know, by project, how am I going to do this, income versus cost of goods sold, this can change really frequently. Now, the reason I bring this out of QuickBooks is QuickBooks has a really cool cash flow manager tool, but it doesn't allow you to tag items, nor does it allow you to indicate by project. And I find that really, really useful. So I can see like, hey, for this project, what's my cash flow gonna be? And I'm gonna show you when we talk about the pivot table, how that can be really, really useful. Okay, so um, that's kind of why we bring it out. But those monthly expenses in that other cash flow can be a little bit tedious to add in especially because we know a lot of that's kind of the same over time. So what I've done with this template, and you can make use of this, is I've created an expenses monthly template. So what I'm gonna do to demonstrate that, I'm gonna take my expenses for the months of December, November, October. I'm gonna delete all these. And I'm gonna show you how we can add those really quick with this template that I made. Okay. So, um, and let's just sort that. Okay, so I've gotten rid of all those expenses, so my cash flow is going to look wrong, okay, because of that. So I've created this monthly template, and the monthly template looks a lot like what we're doing in the ledger. We have a date, type, project, description, etc. But what we're doing with this, the date we're going to calculate, and what I want you to do with this template is I want you to indicate the month I want you to list the various expenses that are regular that are gonna happen every single month. And then you can indicate the month you want it to happen. So 10-1, it's gonna update the date here. So I can take this list, okay, I just copied it and I go to my ledger and I'm gonna paste the values in there. Values is really important. We don't wanna paste in the formulas because the formulas won't work. So again, if I go back to my monthly template, these are formulas, see? Okay, now if I want to do it for November, okay, the, the day changes because I have my day of the, the month here. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to go to the ledger, paste values. Great, and let's go one more for December. Now, of course, once you're in the ledger, you can deviate from your template. So if I'm in this ledger, and I'm like, hey, you know what? Um, monthly insurance toward the end of the year, I gotta pay more for whatever reason. Go ahead and make that update there. And then of course we can sort by date. And then my chart is updating appropriately.
Okay, so the monthly template is helpful. I use this, actually, I do this for my personal expenses as well. So I have a, a monthly like, all right, I'm gonna spend this much on uh, my mortgage, I'm gonna spend this much on meals, I'm gonna spend this much on going out, all that stuff, and then we can bring that into our ledger. Okay, so this is kind of ready to go as it is, but I do wanna show you how we can make use of pivot tables and slicers as well. Okay, so you noticed in the lists tab, I have a few extra columns here next to my categories. And what this allows us to do is if we do some VLOOKUP stuff, we can categorize this so I can have a pivot table tell me kind of what the chart is telling me, and then I can, um, I can slice off of it. I'll show you the slicer, okay? So let me show you what I mean. So in this ledger, we're gonna add some formulas. Now I already have a formula over here in month. It might make sense if you wanna highlight those so you don't update them and, and mess up that formula, you can go ahead and do that. I'm gonna add three columns over here. And I'm just gonna label these breakdown one, BD1, BD2, and BD3. And what I wanna do is based on this type, I wanna go and grab these breakdowns because I'm gonna show you how we can bring these into a pivot. All right, so I'm gonna do a VLOOKUP equals VLOOKUP, and I'm going to use this cell here, B3, Okay, I'm gonna look for that cell in this range. It's gonna be B to E. And I'm gonna look for, in this case, the second column, and I want an exact match, so I'm gonna indicate false. Okay, and so it gives me that one income. Now, I wanna do this across the board, so I'm gonna do a few things here. I'm gonna lock in my search for B, I'm gonna lock in my columns, and that's ready. I'm also going to do a little formula that um, you know, as I pull these down, if it's blank, I don't want it to look up. So I'm gonna do this really quick thing where I'm gonna say, if uh, B3 is blank, then um, give me blank. If not, give me the B lookup. I'm gonna lock in that B again as well, okay? So now as I drag this over, it should be the same throughout. All I gotta do now is go into G and change it. Instead of column two, I'm now gonna go to column three. So if I look at this range here, I got column one, two, three, four. Okay, so I'm gonna look at column three here, and here I'm gonna look at column four. Whoops. Okay, now I can take this whole thing and copy it down. And probably want it to go all the way down. I'm, you know, you have these formulas go to like 300 or something, just so they're far enough. Okay, so now what I can do with this is I can do a really cool pivot. Let me show you that. So I'm gonna highlight the entire data set. And I am going to insert pivot table onto a new sheet. Okay, and here I'm gonna start indicating, first of all, I want my values to be the amount. Okay, so there's my net cash, right? And that should match my filtered total. That makes sense, right? Okay, so now in this pivot table, I'm gonna start adding rows for BD1. Okay, there's my income, cost of goods sold, expenses, other. The reason I added those BDs, the other thing I'm gonna do real quick, because I got empties here, I don't like seeing empties, I'm gonna go to a filter and I'm gonna do anything that, that has a date that isn't blank. That's one way to do it. Another way to do it would be to anything that has a type that isn't blank. You know, it's pretty much just saying no blanks allowed. Okay, so that gives me income, cost of goods sold, expenses, other. I want to calculate gross profit, net profit. To do that, we're gonna add additional layers, okay? So if I go to BD2 up top, you can obviously label these something else. So there's my gross profit, I have income, cost of goods sold, and the pivot table is giving me the total then. It's the you know, it's that total there. 163,490, and then I have my expenses down there. Expenses total, excellent, I'm almost there. One more level, B3 now gives me my net profit, okay? So let me explain that a little bit further. What I'm doing with these categories is I'm forcing the pivot table to give me totals at certain levels. So I indicated here that I want, um, I, I labeled these really just as a way of keeping them in order. So the pivot table is gonna go in alphabetical order unless we give it something else to go off of. So I'm saying one, two, three, four, I want it to go in that order. And then I'm saying income and cost of goods sold, I want the, the sum of those two to give me my gross profit. And then I want the sum of those three, income, cost of goods sold, and expenses to give me my net profit. 
okay? And that's what we're getting here. So I have income and cost of goods sold. There's my gross profit. Then I have my expenses. And then I will have my net profit. And then I have my other, other cash flow stuff. And there's my total. And what I can do with this is I can now put months across it as well. Because I did that month calculation, let's put along the columns, let's put month. And those should go in order, and they are. So now I have income, cost of goods sold. I see a gross profit over time. I see expenses over time. I have a net profit over time. I can format this if I want to, okay? Um, however, pivot tables are dynamic, so you might not want to do too much formatting because it might not apply. But like taking off the decimals, okay? Just making it nice and neat. You can do conditional formatting, whatever. So that's cool, so that's looking good. What I want to do now is let's think about what slicers can do for us, okay? So um, we can add a slicer to this information so I don't have to go into the pivot table to filter it. So let's say, for example, I only want to look at a certain project. I could go into the pivot table and say, give me this whole thing for this project. I could do that. Instead of doing that, we can use a slicer. It's a little bit more user friendly. So let me talk about that. So if we go to data, we're going to go add slicer. It's asking me what's the data range. Okay, the data range is my ledger and it's all this stuff here. Okay, that's my data range and it's asking me to select a column. I'm going to do a project. Okay, and then the really important part about this on the slicer, apply to pivot tables. Okay, so now when I take this slicer, you can see that it's allowing me to filter by project. So I can clear this, I can say just give me 65 Central Park, click OK, and my pivot table updates. I usually like slicers to be up top, so I'm going to insert some cells. And part of the reason for that is that pivot tables will always grow to the right and down. Okay, so if you put something on top, you should be in good shape. Okay, so I have my slicer there. And I can say, all right, give me my net profit or my net cash flow for everything that's not a project, okay? Everything that's NA. And there you go, negative, which makes sense. Like if it's not a project, I'm probably not getting revenue, okay? Or I could say, just give me all my projects, everything that's not NA. All right, we can add more than one slicer. I can copy this slicer and then paste it. And then instead of doing project, I can now slice off of type or month, okay? So I can take this and I say, hey, give me, ooh, interesting, look at this. Okay, so keep, this is what I mean by formatting uh, pivot tables because they grow. Uh, what happened is that I moved things around a little bit and now my date is formatted to be numbers. So we gotta be careful of that all the time with pivots. I like to kind of get my pivots in a spot and then, and then leave them be. So I just change that. So I can pivot or I can adjust this and say, just give me, uh, maybe I just want like the last quarter of the year. I can grab those three months and then there's my total. Okay, so the slicer idea is really, really cool. And this is why we're always looking to get a data set in some kind of ledger. Because we can pivot off of it and because we can make it dynamic, we can make really cool dashboards. All right, so you're gonna get this template. You can have this, go to our website to download it and then start playing around with it and make it yours. You're gonna make it your own copy of it. So it's your own thing. You can take my logo off of it. You can change the colors, do whatever you want with it. And then let me know what questions you have. What we're gonna do is we're gonna build out a series on all the cool stuff that we're doing in Google Sheets that we can bring information out of our books and we can understand what's going on with our business, okay? Cash flow itself is really tough to project and so we need some kind of tool that makes it a little bit faster for us. This is good if we have an admin, we have a VA, we can certainly get some help on populating this. And as I'm gonna show in future videos, we can actually bring that information in from Builder Trend as well. So I'd like to know your comments, your thoughts, your questions, what doesn't make sense. I know I went through a lot in a short period of time, but I wanted to show you everything we created. I created this template in less than an hour, okay, to deliver to you. 
there's so much more we can do with it, obviously. Okay, so if you have any questions about it, I'd love to hear them. I'd love to continue to build this stuff out for you. These are the problems that I'm solving every single day in my business, and I want to share those with you as well. Be sure to check out all the free resources we have available at IncomeDigs.com. We also have a really awesome brand new course coming out called Builder Books Academy. We'd love to have you in there. If you use QuickBooks Online to manage your building business, whether you flip, whether you do new construction, whether you do renovations, we'd love to have you in the course. This is literally everything I know about bookkeeping for a building business. Okay. Until next time, check out all the free resources available at IncomeDigs.com. I will see you on the next video.